right now so I don't forget to do that. Please stay safe, stay well. You know, heroes wear all your retroflective gear and your reflective gear, um, capes and also masks. So make sure you're socially distancing, keeping each other safe and healthy. And with that, I am going to stop my share. That is all the good housekeeping stuff. Now we can get to the good stuff. Scott, I'm gonna hang out behind the scenes, watch the wait room, let folks in. If you would be so gracious as to introduce our panelists, kick us off and then Court's got some slides to get us going. Sounds great. Thank you, Marilee. And uh, great to see everybody on this nice spring morning. It's kind of nice to be able to see that uh, coming into work this morning, it's above freezing. So that was kind of nice in the uh, lakes region here. So it's great to see everybody. Um, we've got a great uh, program that uh, these folks are actually going to uh, kick off here and we'll do a little Q&A uh, with the panelists here uh, this morning as well to discuss some of the um, tips and, and uh, pointers that we can all share with one another relative to the advocacy of our, our public works um, work groups that we actually have with working with our elected officials and other uh, town folks here so this morning. So this will be really great. So we've got uh, Megan Terrio from uh, the town of Guilford, uh, public works director up there in the Lakes region, just a couple of hops over from where I am. And Kyle Fox from the uh, town of Merrimack is here with us as well. And then Court uh, Bloomquist who is here from the uh, town of uh, Keene and uh, Court has many hats and uh, has to be an advocate in many different fronts as a public works director as, as many different public works directors end up having to do. So um, he will probably share in a broad spectrum as he kind of kicks this off for us uh, this morning and, and uh, we'll start with the highlight and uh, I'm gonna kick it right over to you Court so that we can um, have plenty of time here. So. Court's going to start off and share a screen and start talking right. about the advocacy work. Great. Thank you, Scott. And, and thank you, Marley and uh, Technology uh, Training uh, Technical Center. Again, it's uh, been great. I said now I'm going on 27 years of, of training from, um, from, from UNH, and I can't speak highly enough. So again, anybody who hasn't participated I do encourage um, you and, and, and your folks because uh, it is a, a great way of uh, getting together and exchanging ideas. And that's really part of advocacy is. So I'm gonna share my screen here for a few moments. As Scott said, I'm gonna try to set sort of the general table about um, advocacy. I think we've all uh, have probably experienced this. Um, we in public works, we, uh, I think we have all been a, a tendency to be folks who like getting the job done. Uh, we don't like a whole lot of spotlights. Um, our, a good day for us is if we don't get any phone calls. Um, but we also, over the years, I've, I've heard from um, a lot of directors and road agents and, and other public works professionals about, well, they don't really appreciate what I do in town or they don't really know what I do. I, I don't understand. I mean, we do all this work. Uh, we provide water. We, we provide all these essential services. So I think advocacy is one of those things that um, we're going to have to pick up and uh, do ourselves as we talk a little bit more. So what is advocacy? Well, I think uh, the simplistically, it, it's again, it's the act of uh, supporting a cause uh, or a proposal. It, it is influencing a decision. I know, again, we don't always like um, that idea that we have to uh, influence people, uh, but that's really what advocacy is: making people, uh, letting people understand what what is going on, what is the um, what is the issue, and and providing them information to, to help them make uh, make a make a decision. And for advocacy, um, there needs to be an advocate. There needs to be somebody, or a group, or an individual who is promoting those interests, who are promoting those ideas. And in public works, I think we, do, we, we, we work really hard to try to do that. But in a lot of cases, as I said, we don't always have a lot of outside advocates. There's not a lot of people standing up on the common in Keene, waving their signs, going, we love your water and great job plowing that, plowing that snow last night. Um, so uh, we're going to need to be thinking about how can we really begin advocating and finding those people within our communities that can advocate for us. And at the end of the day, I think you really end up being self-advocates. I mean, who else 
knows our knows what we do who else knows um what needs to what what it takes to get the various pieces of work done so what is self-accuracy well it, it's really the ability as this chart says is to uh, let people and, and let the community know what our needs are it helps to inform decisions uh, you all know those town meetings are have wrapped up for uh, those who are in towns those of us in cities we're right in the middle of our budget i'm in the process of finishing up and i have to provide information to help my council decide um, what they should do whether it's what roads to pave what water lines to replace and what equipment to buy we also need to um, let them know what our needs are because again i think we are public works professionals we're really good at making do with what we have um, because we that's part of who we are but sometimes we don't always tell people, well, what do we really need to do this job? And let the decision makers then decide. And I know in my time here in Keene over the years, um, we work really hard in the department to talk about the infrastructure, talking about what the infrastructure is. And I will say in, in my 27 years, I necessarily haven't been denied. Certainly I understand fiscal constraints, but at the end of the day, um, folks really um, have come to understand what it takes to, to keep a lot of our systems running. And I know in, in talking with lots, uh, lot, lots of you there and also talking with folks across the country, one of the challenges is, um, where do I begin all this? Where do I begin advocacy? How do I, how do I get going in this? And hopefully today we're gonna be hearing with some other folks uh, about that. But one of the things that we always like saying here in New Hampshire and, and I, when I go, uh, meeting meet nationally and national conferences, uh, we have a saying here in New Hampshire is it all starts local. So that's where you can start. You can start at your town, at your select board, at your city council. And, and what are some of the things um, that you can start doing to, to start that self-advocacy, start doing it? Announcements. Um, I know my city manager, um, every, every other week we have city council meetings. And uh, she has a section on, on the schedule of her uh, a meeting agenda where she makes announcements about what's going on in the city. I mean, it ranges everything from um, if someone is receiving an award to upcoming, upcoming uh, projects or work. Uh, she may uh, announce something for the police department. Um, I always try to make sure she has something from me at every meeting whether it's announcing hey uh, roads that roads are going to be we're going to be putting weight limits up on the roads coming up to what construction projects are starting to we've got a couple new master road scholars in, in the department whatever it may be i try to make sure i get to her each each council meeting at least one one thing from public works because i think it's important because when people start hearing about what's happening they start getting interested and that's a simple way to, to sort of make announcements um, to let people know what's going on. Informational correspondence. It's another tool that we've been using over the years here. Um, a lot of times this comes out of my um, uh, city engineers um, group. Uh, I try to encourage in the beginning of the construction season to go ahead and get a, a, um, information out to my mayor and city council that goes in their boxes. Um, it has general information about what projects are starting, start and completion dates, a brief description of it. One of the things that I find very useful about this is, this makes the council feel like they're in the know. And, and that's important too, because you, you want your decision makers to feel like that they can tell their constituents, hey, what's happening? So you may have something um, going on. Maybe it's leaf collection that's coming up or household hazardous waste. Go ahead and, and, and do a quick memo up through your town administrator, up through your city manager, that just goes into the boxes, into the, uh, it doesn't have to be genitized anywhere. That just gives a little uh, happening of what's coming up. And, it, and I said, uh, particularly again, your, your, your elected officials, they really like that because when they're out and about, they can, they can let their constituents know, hey, guess what? Household has ways of starting up again. If you get, make sure you get there to start off. So I use those a lot here to try to get information. I know Kyle was just talking about uh, events and things like this. This is an example of some of uh, the informational products we've done. We started in 1999 doing an infrastructure report card and uh, it went over funding and went over sort of the general conditions of our, our things. But we did this as informational. It wasn't necessarily a, a full blown presentation. It was our council just ate this up at that particular time. Events, 
as I mentioned, Kyle will probably mention his event. He recently, uh, the Parks and Rec had a winter, uh, winter uh, festival here in Keene. We, we have a number of events throughout the year that we try to get out and do. One of our, one of our main ones has been going on for over 27 years now is our water science fair. Every, every uh, April, uh, we get out and, into this local schools uh, for fourth graders. And my water folks um, help uh, the, the teachers come up with a program for teaching about water. And they have their, the kids come up with projects. And then each elementary school has a competition. And the top two projects from each elementary, we had six end up coming over to the city's science, water science fair that we, we hold at our water treatment facility. And then ultimately the top three winners go off to the state. You know, we've been doing this for 27 years. It's kind of interesting because now um, I have children of, of folks who did it as fourth graders. I mean, that's how scarily how long when that, that uh, we've been doing this event. But it's again, it's one of these great events that um, it really helps. I think we in this profession really emphasize um, uh, education, um, the sciences, et cetera. And we also use the opportunity to gain the parents to our water treatment facility because while the kids' projects are being judged, Mom and dad get to walk around and see where their water comes from because they pay they pay water rates. They write that check to the city of Keene. So it's a great way of, 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 of getting advocacy. Uh, Highway division, I see Bill Burns from our department is on. Uh, he leads on an annual basis our uh, tree planting for Arbor Day. Keene is proud of its 41 years as a tree city uh, USA community. And I said, Billy's been, been running that for close to 20 years, I think now um, for doing, uh, we, get a, we get an elementary school class that comes out and we plant a tree. We, we used to, uh, we would bring over some of uh, the arborists from uh, Keene State. And it's a great opportunity again for, for the kids to interact. So when they go home and, and they talk to mom and dad about it. Uh, we also participate in any of the events here. Our police department every, every other year used to do a community night out. I make sure that again, public works is part of that community night out. Because again, it's an opportunity for um, the community to come in and see you doing it. So if you got events, they don't necessarily have to be your own. Um, you just need to per uh, participate as part of it. Relationship with local media. I know um, this is one that none of us really like doing or we think we should do, but it is a, it is a, it is a critical and component of, of what we have in Keene. Um, we have radio. Um, I have a daily print newspaper. We have a weekly um, print newspaper um, and some other um, now more electronic media that, that is out there. And we do, we do work with them. I, over my years, I know 10 a.m. is when the Keen Sentinel goes to press. So if a reporter calls me about something, I make sure I get back to them before 10 a.m. Just because I want, I want to make sure that they get the information that they, that, that they need. Um, as I mentioned, I think I saw Bill Burns on there. Billy has a twice a week radio spot with one of our local radio folks for, for 10 minutes on, uh, I think it's, and he'll correct me, I know it's Thursday and I think it's also uh, Monday. Uh, he gets on and, it, and it's kind of talk with the super highway superintendent. He gets to talk a little bit about what the highway division is going on. He'll even, he'll even mention some of the other work, maybe a water sewer group is doing or a construction project that's going on. And people call in and believe it or not, they will, they will tell them about potholes or something, but he goes and he makes sure then he addresses those issues. And, they, and again, it's been an incredible um, I think boost for the department. It puts a face and a voice behind um, our titles, et cetera. Um, as I mentioned, we do um, press releases um, pretty much in everything we do. And we also make sure we also support um, the other local utilities if they're doing work in the streets. So we're pushing out probably at least daily, if not every other day, um, press releases to the uh, to the local press about what is happening. And I encourage you for you all to use them. And again, a lot of them may not have these. Your communities may not have one. If you do have a weekly or monthly publication, hey, get something to them about what's coming up. Um, you, and maybe you have to look ahead. But if there's a again a fall a fall uh, um, newsletter. Start talking about winters. Never too early to start talking about winter. Um, if it's a winter one, it's never too early to start talking about mud season and any upcoming summer construction. Again, it's ways of, of getting out there and getting people to see you as the expert when it comes to dealing with your roads, your infrastructure component of it. Probably the last area um, that everybody else, I think a lot of other folks will be ta also talking about is social media. 
um, that has really provided a platform for us to really get out and create a, a, a base of support uh, um, for, for what we do. Um, we have to realize is this, the work that we do disrupts people's lives. And the more they know about that disruption, I think the better they handle it. And that's one of the things we, we talk about here and we try to make sure that, that we get out and about because um, one of the worst things in the world that I get when I get that phone call from the manager or from the mayor or one of the counselors or even a resident is, I didn't know. I mean, people are gonna be angry. There's no doubt in our minds because we're disrupting their lives. Um, but at least when they're angry and they say, well, you told me you were going to do this. I'm like, I always feel better. At least I can say, I, I understand. Yep. I'm glad you knew about what we were going to be doing out there. Um, but, but I, but I get always get the little, little, little uh, more pain when, when they come back and, and say, Hey, I don't know. I didn't know something was going to happen. So we use a number of platforms uh, for our, our social media. Um, Facebook is certainly um, the big one. We've been online since about 2011. Um, I know a lot of folks get a little nervous about, wow, that's a lot of work. It can be. Um, again, I've been very fortunate. I, I have an admin person um, who is really, really good at this. So um, our operational folks uh, will feed to her stuff that's happening uh, with phones today. As you can see, the folks in the fields can take pictures. So we're putting out all kinds of things. And that's one of the things, and I think others will talk about this when you start working with social media. It, it's something that you sort of have to kind of continually feed the machine, uh, I guess I'm going to say. And um, as you can see, here's a number of different things we put out there. We, we put out on um, projects, uh, all the way to the left, that was a water tank that was going under construction last year. And uh, we, we put out on every, about once a week, a little over, just some photos about the water tank going up. And um, we even had a video. Um, a lot of the information, particularly, of course, in the winter months, is uh, about what we're doing, say, with operations. And uh, we take on, uh, we, we kind of come up with our own little theme. So we have our snow fighter. So um, let's say Bill Burns, who's our highway superintendent, his foreman, they'll feed up to, um, up to my admin person uh, what's going on, what's the plan for how we're going to attack snow. And, and, and I know a lot of times people get, we get a little nervous going, I don't know if I want to tell me because it may change. Weather's unpredictable. Yeah, that's true. Um, and what's weathermen are only right maybe 60, 30% of the time and no one really dislikes them. They're still on the news every, every, every six o'clock. So, but it's important for people to know what you're doing. What does it take to fight a snowstorm? So it's, this has been really good. Even some of the, the, the foremen will put some stuff out themselves. I, I don't necessarily have a rule against it. That's one of the things I recommend when you start dealing with social media is that you do have a policy or at least some practices about how you're going to do that. Um, I push it down. Um, if, if folks want to put stuff up there, I'm okay with it. We have our parameters, sort of what we want to say, what we do. One of the things we don't do is we don't engage. We don't engage with if someone says something negative. Hey, that's okay. Everyone, everyone is, is not going to be positive. And again, what we find is also self-correcting because there are other people who are our fans who do follow us for the information we provide. They will self-correct maybe if someone is not overly nice. And last one, there's just a, a picture of our of our leaf collection operation that's going on. Because again, most people don't have a clue about, about what we do because as you got, as you all know. The snow gets taken care of. People go to bed. They wake up the next morning. Golly gee, the road is clear. People rake their leaves to the to the side of the street. They go to work and they come home and they're gone. So, this is a great way of letting people know sort of what's going on. We also use Twitter, um, Instagram a little bit. So those are some of the other platforms that we have out there. So hopefully this will give us a a, a start uh, about uh, advocacy and uh, and again look forward to talking a little bit about what's going on with you all out there. So Scott, back to you. Thank you, Court. Appreciate that uh, kind of kick off and kind of laying the foundation, as I would say, in, in this discussion. So what I'm gonna do is kind of bounce back and forth between our panelists here and let them kind of talk about uh, their communities and uh, or communities that they've served in the past that uh, where they have actually instituted other advocacy uh, work there with their folks there in their communities and share those experiences and uh, then we'll we'll uh, kind of see how that goes before we start opening it up for a little bit of Q&A with uh, the folks that are here on the on the uh, session today. So 
I'm going to I'm going to kick over to Megan and uh, put her right on the top of the pier here and and uh, have her share a little bit of her experiences in uh, Guilford and uh, maybe in Goffstown when she was there as the assistant public works director and public works director um, there and, and uh, share her experiences. So Megan, it's all yours. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I feel like advocacy for public works is really starts right in your office. Um, you know, all the guys who work for you, uh, they can be advocates for you as well. So I think it's important to know to um, you know, start the positive aspect of public works right in your office, you know, showing the appreciation for what you guys do, um, keeping them in the loop with what's going on, you know, anything that um, I share with the selectmen, sometimes like a, a report or um, important things, I'll try and print out a copy and leave it on the break room table so they know what's going on too. Um, so I think that kind of thing is important. Um, the guys also know uh, the different stuff I share, so uh, I involve them and they're great about sharing photos with me from out on the job site, which is really nice. So they'll text me pictures um, and then I turn that into a post and share those. So I just think it, you know, they like being a part of it. They may not say that, but I think they like helping out and being a part of sharing, you know, the work that they're doing. Uh, because I think when it comes down to it, most of us who work in public works, we do it because we enjoy it and we love it and uh, we're proud of what we do, you know. So um, I agree with, uh, you know, Court with all the things about sharing your information out to the public. When people have the information, I think they're more apt to, uh, like you said, we, we disturb them with the work we do. But when we share information with them, uh, they kind of take it a little easier because at least they know what's coming. Uh, a good example of that was the three foot snowstorm we had. Uh, you know, that was kind of disastrous for many of us. I know for us, it was here. I mean, we had trucks off the road left and right and people plowing their roads with snowblowers, you know, so, um, but throughout the storm, I was keeping people involved with how, what was happening from our perspective, not just, yes, we're getting an unexpected three feet, but just so they knew some of the issues we were dealing with. And I feel like that really helped kind of uh, keep everybody a little calmer, you know, so, so I do think sharing information, um, you know, on a regular basis is, is very good and during uh, key events like that. So I think some people obviously are a little afraid of social media and they don't want to get into that. And that's okay. There's so many other ways that you can um, get out there in the community, um, you know, with the events, which we'll talk about, I think later a little more different events, uh, for examples, but um, something really basic we did in Goffstown, then we did again here was um, this is a door hanger and it's two-sided. And it's something we created in Goffstown and then I did it again here. And this is something that you can work with a local printer to have made. And it simply just has basic information about the hours of operation. And on the back, there's little check boxes uh, where you can check what work you're doing in the neighborhood, whether it's drainage work, ditch work, pavement work, road repairs. Uh, sometimes we would print a little like a couple sentences on um, kind of like a sticky almost like the labels you put on, wide labels that you put on mailing, and we just stick it right on here. So we would print a bunch of those and stick those on here. You can staple a um, business card to it too. So this is a nice, really easy way without getting into social media and technical stuff of working with a printer to help you develop something like this, and then put this on the door hangers uh, on a street when you're about to do you know, a bigger project or something. Um, so it's just a little way to get some information out there. Um, so that's something easy that can be done. Um, the other thing is um, trying to put a positive light on any issues you're having. So for me in Goffstown, we had single stream and there were a lot of issues with contamination. So we had to find creative ways to deal with that. Um, so sometimes, you know, you take the issues that you have and you turn it into, you know, like we had a flyer on recycling right. So that's kind of the phrase um, I've been using both in Goffstown and here um, to recycle right. Everyone has different rules, you know, depending on what we're doing in our communities, but you can, you know, make little flyers like this and you can have them available at, you know, town hall, the library, public works, um, your transfer station. And in it, you can put things like the do's and don'ts, you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> the stuff about, you know, uh, kitty litter and diapers that end up in the single stream and things like that, uh, yard waste. And so these things you can just make in Microsoft Word, you know what I mean? Nothing fancy. Um, and again, if you were feeling overwhelmed with that kind of stuff, there's many of us out there and you can use Public Works Net and, um, you know, to ask us questions and I'm happy to share my templates for things like that. But 
a little three-sided flyer you can print from the copier, you know, um, is great and something easy to do. So, um, so I just, I want people to realize, you know, you don't have to get all into, you know, Facebook and that I, I, I'm a huge supporter of the Facebook because I, I think it is a great way to reach out and, and get to the community. But if you're feeling overwhelmed with doing that and you just don't feel like you have time, then I think there's other little things you know you can do. Um, and you can definitely piggyback on other events so you don't have to do your own entire event. You know, the library often hosts events. Um, Kyle said he's got, a, uh, I think a Parks and Rec one, the PD does the national night out. So you can kind of hop on any of those events and that's a great way to just be present. Uh, you can hand out flyers at an event like that, whether it's coloring pages for kids up to, you know, info on Japanese knotweed for adults. You know what I mean? You can hand out all kinds of stuff at events like that. So uh, just participating in that stuff is a great way to get yourself out there for public work. So, um, so I don't know. So I think, you know, uh, the other thing you can do is um, besides the town website is lo local access TV. A lot of people have a local TV station. So sometimes if you have just a simple message like, hey, we're having household hazardous waste day. If you send that to the local access TV, uh, they can scroll that um, on that TV station. So that's another thing you can do um, to get a little information out there if you have a TV station uh, that can share your information. Uh, so, so those are a few things. Uh, I'll let everybody else chat and come back around, so. Thank you, Megan. Um, yeah. the, the, the door knock, is a, that, that's an awesome, awesome thing. I think I had actually seen that once before with um, only for water, you know, somebody, they had a water um, break, main, water main break, maybe it was in um, Manchester or someplace. And, you know, that's the first thing that they did. And I think it was before all the, you know, ability to communicate electronically and they would, they were going around door to door and, and uh, you know, putting up the flyers and, and notifying people about the water main break. But that's great, you know, as far as like road projects, tree cutting, you know, all kinds of stuff that you're doing. So that, that's a, that's a great one there. Right? I like that. I'll be, I'll be calling you on that one. Uh, <laughs> so um, we're going to uh, shift over to Kyle down in uh, Merrimack and uh, he can share some of his uh, advocacy there in, the, in Merrimack. Good morning, morning, Scott. Uh, thanks for facilitating today's event and thank you, Marilee, for, for inviting me and, and hosting the event. Um, we love the door knockers too. Uh, they're, they're just such a wonderfully easy uh, way to communicate with those we're directly affecting. Uh, so feel free to give us a call as well. We can let you know who makes them. And, and I actually don't know. I'd have to talk to Lori <laughs> and see where she gets them from. But um, I wanted to just kick off and, and kind of talk about the journey of advocacy. Uh, for me, I started with the town 15 years ago as operations manager and then moved into the town engineer role before becoming a director where I am now. And prior to that, I worked for uh, New Hampshire Department of Transportation for a number of years. And so for me, the journey uh, through DOT, um, even though I was out in construction for a bulk of uh, my time there, the, the interactions with, with the public were very limited and, and I will say kind of standoffish. You know, we were the state, you know, we're doing what we do and that's what we do. So coming to the town where everything is very much more personal and um, for, for both us and for the residents, it, it was quite a shift uh, for me. And, and I, think, I think I'm not unlike most of us in public works that despite the name public works, we don't like to be in the public. And, and it's hard for us to to advocate for ourselves first and foremost. Uh, police and fire are great at it. You know, we can certainly take some cues from them, um, but we're not saving kitties from trees and, and running around with the blue lights. So, so it's a little harder for us. And, and to be able to do that, it, it takes effort and, 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 and working at it. Um, but, but doing things like the door knockers that Megan talked about, uh, social media pages, just putting ourselves out there. Uh, first and foremost, people just want to know what we do. Where is their tax money going? And they want to know that it's it's well thought out. Um, there's a reason for what we're doing, and and that it's it's going to make their lives better and have a have a really good impact on them. 
So I think I think that's really the key for advocacy is starting with yourselves to uh, really focus on why you do the job you do, and that we do it better through advocacy programs. Well, that's great. Thank you, Kyle. And I, and I, you know, as I'll, I'll bounce a few questions back and forth to you folks, um, just to get a little bit of perspective as well. But um, just to kind of echo a little bit on uh, what both, uh, well, actually all uh, Court and Megan and, and Kyle have actually said, you know, in my, my experience in, in uh, 35 years in, in local government is, is just like, you know, all these folks have said, you, you start with your core of your actual group and you know you have them as their that buy-in and they actually help you be able to do that advocacy work that it's not just on the on the director's plate um, to actually do that you know and Megan talked about you know with having folks in in her department she's she's charged them by the sounds of things really well and excited them um, because they've been sending her those photographs I'm sure they do the same type of stuff you know, with uh, with you, Kyle, and, and Court, as far as feeding that information to you, uh, so that then you can, you know, make reports into the, you know, elected officials, town managers, uh, administrators, and, and feed that information forward. And that's that's critically important, because as we all know, you know, if, if you're a road agent or you're a director, depending on what level of, of work that you're at, um, you become very consumed in, in what you actually are doing. And and having all those people helping you to be able to do that just allows you to then, you know, spread the word even, even more uh, through your outlets um, and being able to do that. One thing that I've always noticed about, about our staff is that, first of all, they don't like to brag about what they do. Um, and it's just like Megan said, they like coming to work and doing what they're doing. They see the satisfactions of their work as they do it but they're not big people to go out and, and promote it. You know, I mean, it, it's their job, um, they do it. And, you know, they're not people that really wanna be always be up on the pedestal. Um, we as directors, managers and, and uh, administrators and such, you know, do pull them into it uh, because they, they do need to be recognized um, in that situation. And I think back on my law enforcement career and. You know, you have a SWAT call and you end up having to close the street off uh, because you've got a barricaded person or, you know, a, a, a high risk situation and you have to detour traffic um, in that situation there. And um, generally, you know, as, as you, as Kyle mentioned, is that, you know, the, the police don't tend to get uh, maybe some of that resistance um, in some of those situations. Uh, because they, you know, once again, you think about what's on TV and what's on the media, they, that's always in, in people's face. So they, they understand that these things happen. These are emergencies, they come up. And they don't think about the water main break. It's an emergency um, that closes the road in, in, uh, in public works is there to have to detour the traffic and those types of things there. Um, and certainly being able to get the message out certainly does make a huge difference. I think communication in this situation um, is the best advocacy that we actually have, of course. And that's how, that's how we can do that, whether it be through the door knockers or social media or reports to the city managers and, and those types of things to, to actually get it out there and do that. And uh, everybody has a different outlet in their, in their community as to how they can do that. The thing about the community that I'm in now, it's very, it's very small. Um, we only have a weekly um, newspaper that actually gets out uh, that way, uh, we tend to use our um, our own, um, you know, whether it be through social media or we end up using our uh, town website to try to help promote some of that information. Uh, but we, you know, we try to try to get that out on the different outlets that we can um, in newsletters, uh, putting the uh, stuffer in the, uh, you know, the uh, tax bills. That's another way of advocacy and trying to promote what's happening in uh, different departments. So that, that's really great. Um, maybe, maybe I could kind of bounce a, a question to you folks and, and uh, see how, you know, Megan talked about how she, you know, as far as charging and getting her, uh, her own staff uh, excited about that. Is there anything that you folks can share with us as to maybe some, some uh, techniques that you used in stimulating your own staff to understand what this advocacy is and how, you know, to get them excited about sending you pictures and, 
Um, you know, maybe the short video clips that end up happening uh, that way. I don't know if Megan, if you want to, you know, maybe kick it off here and then I just kind of go through the group there as to how you kind of charged your people up to, to help you out in that advocacy side of things. Um, so yeah, with the, everybody downstairs knew I had tried to start the Facebook page when I got here a year ago. And, um, you know, I, when I go out to job sites and I take pictures, so I first was the one who was doing that. Um, but I told them, Hey, you know, if you have a great shot of something, you know, feel free to take that. And then as soon as one person did it, you know, I said, Oh, this is perfect. Great. And I made sure that I used, you know, their shot online to show them that, you know, I was using it. And, you know, I just encourage them, hey, when you're out there today, you know, can you get a picture of this or over at the solid waste center, they when we opened a brand new solid waste center this last year. And so when we were loading, let's say our first uh, load of plastics, you know, for the very first time, I said, oh, get some pictures, you know, and I did a, you know, post about, hey, we just, you know, the town brought all these plastics in. I made a positive post about the great work the community did to bring us the plastics and talked about, you know, the revenue we made from bailing it and everything. But I asked the crew over there, you know, can you get some pictures, you know, and they took them right from inside the Bobcat while they were loading it and stuff. So the guys have been very good about that. And, and I just make sure I always, you know, tell them I appreciate that kind of stuff. And somebody did send me a little video once, I think of uh, cleaning a culvert, uh, steaming, steam cleaning a frozen culvert. So I tried to use that. It was a grainy video, but again, it didn't matter. They were nice. They thought of doing it. I posted it online, you know, so I just appreciate when they're trying to help me, you know, to promote public works. So, um, so yeah, I just kind of, I did it myself, but also encourage them to send me pictures anytime that they see their fellow coworkers doing something. Um, so, yeah. Well, that's great. Um, Kyle, have, have you got any pointers as to how you've kind of charged your staff up with that? Yeah, I think, I think largely Scott, it, it starts like Megan said, um, it, it started with me uh, really, really just putting the effort in and, and doing some stuff. Uh, when, when we started our Facebook page, I think it was 2012, it, uh, it was like pushing a boulder up the hill. And uh, there was hesitancy on the town council's part, the town manager's part, and, and even the uh, public works director at the time's part. And what I ended up doing is working with our media folks. We created the page and just kind of let it sit in the background. It wasn't published, but I also followed a whole bunch of other public works pages countrywide. Um, and you know, one of, one of the fears about jumping into social media is, and Court talked a little bit about it, is the the negative comments that you know we all see on these local town forums. It's it's frankly poisonous. Um, and what I demonstrated uh, is that we really don't get those um, those kind of comments. We just don't. And and in the communities nationwide, they didn't get them. So we we were finally allowed to publish in 2012, and it was pr primarily an effort on my part to just post stuff and you know pictures of the guys doing stuff, our projects, uh, what's going on in town. And as those positive comments come in and people and our guys see their pictures on there and the positive comments that come out of that, it, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of stimulating. You know, everyone, you, you know, the internet addiction kind of thing, you, you hear the ding and, and you see the, the likes come through and everyone kind of likes that. And um, so the more you do it, the, the more people become acclimated to it and want to jump in. Um, I will say it's still an effort. Um, you know, we, every one of our staff meetings, we talk about advocacy and what, what can we do to reach out? You know, what programs can we do? How different ways can we do it? And, and really pushing the, uh, the social media side of it. Um, it was actually a T-squared class I went to on social media quite a number of years ago where, where I got one of my favorite phrases. And, and the absolute power of social media is that these days people don't want to find their news. They want their news to find them. And, and that's what social media is so brilliant at. And, you know, how many times, you know, prior did we put stuff up on our website? We do press releases and then you get the phone call. Nobody told me. Sure. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd have to I'd have to agree 100% with you, Kyle. That um, I found that um, as as scary as it was to embark upon social media and and you know Facebook, of course, being I think the most reached um, source of that. At least that's what I I kind of found is that um, you know I do think that you're exactly right that that is part of the stimulus even though our staff doesn't want to, you know, be dragged into a selectman's meeting or a city council's meeting and, you know, and uh, be given a, you know, maybe an award and have all kinds of things happen in front of them. And their picture in a newspaper, you know, cause um, in that, those situations there, but they don't mind seeing those likes and that they happen to be part of that picture that ended up being while they're in the, in the trenches and doing the work. Uh, on social media. It's basically just a, a photograph of them, you know, doing what they do every day um, in that situation there. So um, I think that's the, the other piece of that. Um, and I and, and I just actually, I just see um, an actual uh, question there that just came up from, from Krista and thank you very much. I think that as far as the timeliness of uh, social media and how you how you do that? If is it is it um, you know something that's happening uh, fluidly daily? Is there um, do you have delays in, in that type of situation? Um, that you know uh, is that a, is that cumbersome for folks? I mean, I used to find that when I was doing it, um, as much as live stuff as I could do and as close to the event type of thing, I get the best bang for our buck, so to speak. I guess as far as that notoriety, but um, I yeah, don't know. I, I worry about um, like a post getting stale. Like how often do you post to the Facebook page so that people feel like it's up to date and they're not going back and seeing, oh, the last time you posted was three weeks ago. Like I, well, that's what I worry about. <laughs> yeah, Kristen, you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, part of it, I think is you, you as an organization, you as need to establish sort of your frequency. We try to post every day. We put something up every, and again, we ha again, you have stuff every day. Whether it's, hey, the utility company's going to be working out on uh, out on Stonehouse Lane today. Beware! To, hey, Friday a storm is coming. Um, so, I mean, if, if when you start looking at what you do, you've got something that you could push out every day. Uh, we also include things like National Public Works Week. We've got, uh, the, there is a day for everything in the world. And there's lots of days for things like upcoming is National Work Zone Week. Um, so we integrate some of that stuff into our post too, just as part, again, part of the advocacy for, for public works is I try to get, and I, my staff has kind of got into that mode where they're providing something every day. Um, because you're right. I mean, if you become stale, because people have what attention spans of seven to 15 seconds. So you don't, well, I, hey, this is I mean social media. I mean, this, this is the world we live in. So again, it doesn't have to be a lot, but it is reaching out and touching them every day. And, and you've got something that's relevant, but yeah, it is important, I think, to keep up on that and provide something. And again, smaller, smaller departments, maybe you don't do every day. Maybe it's three days a week. When you hit winter, you're doing a little more frequency, but you do need to establish sort of that routine so people know that, oh, it's Tuesday. Public Works should be telling me what's going on this week. Krista, I definitely don't do mine daily just because I'm the only one who does it here. So um, I just don't have enough time to do it daily. But I would say, you know, again, don't, I wouldn't let that deter you from starting it, even if you could. Uh, do one a week and then you'll find that you'll do two a week, you know, and I probably do anywhere from one to three a week. So sometimes what happens for me is I didn't have time all week to do one and I finally had time. So on Friday, I'll post one. But then as Marilee said, I schedule one for the following Monday and maybe the following Wednesday, just because I'm like, oh gosh, I'm going to lose the week again. So sometimes when I finally sit down to do a post, I actually do three posts, but I don't want to do them all at once. So I do one and I schedule two more. So, cause I just, you know, the time gets away from you. You know what I mean? The days fly by and um, you know, the bigger community you're in um, the more staff you might have to help out uh, you know, but when you're doing it, if you're doing it just by yourself, it's hard, you know, but I, I definitely, 
I would tell people not to let that deter you from starting it. So I think one of the best advice um, I could give for Facebook is when you do a post and you're starting a new page, okay? Like I had to start a new page a year ago. So when I started the page, the way I was able to bring some people in was I shared my DPW post to two other community Guilford pages. And when I did that, there's a way you get notifications, right? And it will say, oh, three people liked your post, but they weren't, they were on the community page. So I was able to invite them over to the DPW page. So um, I think that's important to try and do. I'm sure in Laconia, right? There's Laconia is talking, there's all kinds of community pages. So I think you could share your posts out a little bit and it helps you build um, build the people who follow your page. You can also, I asked my police department when I started, I asked them to share that we, uh, cause they have a huge following. So I asked them to share the page when we started just to help us bring on a few people and stuff. So it takes time to build up the, the group. But again, I think anything is better than nothing. It's a whole, it's a whole separate group of people that you're reaching if you hadn't done it at all. So there's, to me, there's only a benefit there. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'll have to have my kids teach me how to use Facebook. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty simple. As okay. far as, as when you set it up, um, I don't know how others set theirs up, but uh, we made the conscious choice that we wouldn't allow um, the public to make posts on our site. Uh, so, we're, so it's closed to posting, but we do allow comments on, on our site. So if we make a posting, people can comment on it. And, and I guess a, a little bit unlike you guys, Court, we do try and answer all of those, um, even the negative ones, uh, but we take it from a professional, here's the facts kind of standpoint. We don't litigate, we, we don't negotiate, uh, we just, here's what we're doing. And it's really been effective. And one of the things we've been really, really pleased to see is when there is a, a rare, and it's rare that there is a negative post more likely before we get a chance to, to say anything, it's the other followers on our page that, that jump on that post and say, no, no, that's not true. Public works is great. So um, yeah, it's, it's been a really, really great experience for, for Merrimack, certainly. Yeah, and I, I think um, what we found over time here, and, and I've seen this evolution as well, as people have gotten more comfortable with social media and the different outlets. And, you know, Mary Lee and I have done a couple different little sessions there talking about social media because it really is, seems to be probably the leading um, uh, way to reach in most communities, the public in order to deal with uh, advocacy for public works. You, know, you think about everything with Public Works Week, you know, I see that the, the posters behind you, Kyle, and, you know, really brings to light you know, that, you know, we, we need to advocate um, all the way through um, for all the different functions in which we do. Many different public works groups um, handle a wide variety of, of duties and assignments. You know, you, you think about it in your, your community there and in courts and, um, you know, the, you know, you have water, you got sewer, you've got, you got a wide spectrum of, of things to advocate for. In that situation, I, you know, I, I tell the story that when I uh, became public works director and road agent in Moultonboro and, and that I had been a police chief and, you know, law enforcement and all that. And, and that, you know, the first time I ever did a PowerPoint presentation was when I was a public works director to the, to the, um, to the board of selectmen and the um, uh, budget committee at that time. And it was all about pavement, uh, pavement, um, you know, preservation and life cycles and, and things of that nature when we were going to do different types of treatments and we weren't going to just take care of the 10 worst roads in town we were actually going to take care of the the good roads in town and those types of things so um in that situation there uh, that was a way of advocacy um in my opinion and that that actually was kind of the groundbreaker uh, that ended up happening in that community at that given time was because as we talk about things in social media and, and pictures and those types of things that's what PowerPoints were. It was, you know, you had pictures, you had charts, you had graphs, you had some, some bulleted text in there to stimulate people in that discussion. So, um, you know, that, that's all, that is another mechanism of, of that advocacy as well. And being able to do that when you do that on a, 
in more of a refined uh, group uh, setting. It, you could be doing the same thing with your, your senior citizens group or um, community center group uh, that gets together. I know that um, I'd been called a number of times to go and speak to different um, civic groups that were out there. And that's another mechanism of advocacy as well. Um, and uh, I think Court mentioned, and, and I think Kyle, you've, you've had a situation, I think also with uh, somebody mentioned with the Parks and Rec doing um, some uh, like first night out type of deals and some of those types of things. I don't know if anyone, um, you know, Court had some pictures up there. Of, um, you know, I think back on the touch of truck situation, our rec department used to always do it. And I think they still continue to do it is that they end up having that um, get together with everybody and you know, the police and fire bring their equipment and DPW brings uh, some pieces of equipment. Um, that's another great show and tell. Um, it also gets some of your staff out of, um, they might feel a little bit out of their comfort zone, uh, uh. They, but most of them like it because um, they get to talk about what they do and what they like, you know, so those are, those are good things too. So I don't know if you folks have anything you want to share on that type of advocacy with working with civic groups and in, in other um, arenas as well. So, Kyle, do you want I to start? have some photos to share from a recent event, not to put him on the spot, Scott, but I think before you hopped on, he was sharing some, some photos with us that he might be willing to talk about. Yeah, that that's a great intro, Scott. Um, we we really make an effort to join in with as many groups as we can in town. Uh, whether it's the schools, the civic uh, groups that you talked about, um, the the rec folks. Um, I guess if you'll indulge me, I'll just spin through a few pictures that I, I threw together. Um, and then I'll show you a, a little video that we put up on our Facebook page that, that was just so much fun this winter. I'll talk about that in a moment, but here's just a few photos I threw together. Um, our Parks and Rec group did a winter carnival this year. Uh, so we, our, our highway group brought over a loader. Uh, the pictures are kind of out of order, so we'll get to that a little bit in a minute. But um, so here's one of the one of the kids on the loader. Uh, for some reason it's not scrolling through the pictures. Oh, there we go. This is one of our favorite events of the year. Uh, COVID has kind of put a, a little halt on it for now, but we uh, we invite the first graders from all three Merrimack schools to come over and do a tour of the facility. And one of the one of the best parts of the day is they all get to put their hands in paint and put their handprint on our wing plows. And so then we put some clear coat over the top and they last most of the winter. And so it's the little kids waving to everybody as we plow. Um, that's a really great event for us. Um, here's some more pictures of the first graders. Uh, we put a map up on the wall so they can put a little star where each of them lives. Uh, it gets them to, to see the map of Merrimack and uh, kind of show the, the scope of, of where, where everyone lives and, and in the town. Uh, we also do open house events. Here's a piece of leftover seven foot pipe that we had. Uh, this one might be a six footer, uh, but uh, the, the annual open house events are great and touch a truck events, we do those, whether for like a civic group, the lions group we, and lioness, we, we do those every year um, and we do them ourselves. Showing construction photos, uh, we get access to projects that, that people have no idea about um, and, and people are really excited. You know, why does it take so long to build a bridge? Well, here's some pictures of, of everything involved. This was actually setting the steel and we put some videos up on our Facebook page about that as well. And, you know, it's just a view that people go to work in the morning, come home in the evening. They never get to see the in between what's happening while they're away. They just know it's taking a long time and, and causing them delays in their, in their day. Uh, finished project. This is one we just finished last year. Uh, we put some flags on it because it finished right around July 4. Um, made, made for real good publicity. The uh, police department brought over a drone, took some overhead views of it. And again, we worked with our media folks to um, 
do a, do a nice little video segment on it. We did this a number of years ago. It was a little coloring contest for Public Works Week. Uh, for again, trying to integrate with the schools, and um, we we invited the winners to come to our Public Works Week luncheon. We made them each a little street sign with their name on it, gave them a little hard hat. Um, just a fun event, and and you know that these kids are going home and talking to their parents and saying how great Public Works is. Again, more construction photos that that people just don't get to see. Um, this is a the Parks and Rec summer camp. Uh, we brought the bucket truck over to show the kids how that operates. Uh, doing uh, good deeds as well. Uh, we've been doing a, a an effort every year for a food drive. Uh, it started as a competition with the police department. We called it badges versus hard hats, and uh, just to again try to try to utilize the, the police resources in their Facebook page, which gets a lot more views than ours, uh, but we can kind of ride their coattails to get some of that good publicity as well. Um, this picture's kind of small, but it's a, it's the uh, town councilors doing a groundbreaking for our new highway facility. Again, getting um, councilors involved and, and other uh, town leaders involved in your projects it really goes a long way to, to uh, helping them understand what our needs are and what we do. There's a picture of the, uh, the wing plow again. Uh, one of the favorite things at our open house uh, that the kids enjoy is our little touch wheels. So there's gravel, salt, sand, uh, different products in these, in these wheels. Kids get to actually touch it and play it and, uh, and that's, that's something that's really enjoyed by all. Uh, one of the great things, particularly if you're an MS4 community, uh, because this gives you credit in your, in your interval uh, program, is we bought a stormwater table a number of years ago. And this makes a great demonstration on what happens when you, you have wastes and other things on, in, in trash on the land. It all ends up with the water. And this is a little kit you can buy. You use little different colored Kool-Aids or um, you, know, you can use hot chocolate as, as kind of a representative of, of pet waste. And you know, then you use a spray bottle to make it rain and you watch everything go into the, into the catch basins and the, uh, the channels and then eventually into the water body. It's a, it's a really great great event. You can see right here in the middle is all our different colorings for, for our different uh, kind of wastes that end up in the water. Uh, more pictures from our open house. We put out the big Santa every year. That's always a big hit. Here's Lori, um, our operations manager, running the uh, stormwater table. This is actually at a Lioness event. I mentioned going to civic groups. Um, they invited us in and whenever we get an invite, we always say yes. Another event, this was again, the winter carnival. Uh, Laurie and her team created this little bean bag toss. You toss the bean bag or snowball, in this case, through the uh, snowman, you got a little prize. And back to the, uh, the loader part of the demonstration, uh, they were ice fishing at the Winter Carnival for loader tires. So just a cute little idea. Uh, the kids had a great time with it. Um, and then the other thing just I wanted to show real quick, this one was just so much fun and I love sharing it. Um, throughout the pandemic, I, I'm, I imagine it's it happened in a lot of communities, but police and fire would do drive-bys for birthday parties and public works was never really invited to those. And, you know, we have a different role. Um, you know, our guys, when they're working, they're, they're, they're working. They're not available to do that kind of stuff. Uh, but one opportunity presented itself this winter in that um, a woman posted on one of the local Facebook pages that her son was very into construction equipment. She was trying to organize uh, private 
contractors to come in on a Sunday for his birthday. Well, obviously a Sunday we couldn't come in because we can't really do overtime for that kind of thing. Uh, so Laurie again through uh, made contact with with the mom and it just worked out that we went over after lunch one day and um, here's the I'll share the uh, the event with you guys. So I'll stop it there, but it, it was such a wonderful event and we got so much goodwill out of doing that. You know, it probably took us 20 minutes of time for all of our crew, uh, but, but that made all of the local uh, forum pages, uh, other Facebook pages, and it's just such a great event and, and really goodwill for public works. That's great, thanks Kyle. Uh, Megan, I think you had, um, a couple of things you wanted to share as well, um, if you still yeah, have Yeah, I can on. do that. So let me see, hopefully I can get it right here. Share page. There's no doubt that uh, these types of events and doing any of this type of stuff is just, you know, once again, it's advocacy, it's partnerships, it's collaboration, you know, whatever, whatever buzzword you want to put with it, um, critically important, so. So this is just our regular town page and we have a public works page. But one of the things I wanted to show you is we made sure we had pictures of, you know, our staff on here. I think it's nice to kind of have a face with all the supervisors, you know, who work for us. So um, there's two new people. Um, Roger's our new operations manager. So got to get his picture up and Bruce keeps avoiding us. So we got to get his up there too. But so um, it's just, I think, kind of nice to put faces uh, with everybody, you know, so that's something uh, we did. Um, another thing I did in Goffstown and here is I created, so you have the main, you know, town webpage, you know, so guildfordnh.org, but then I had the IT people create slash recycle right. And we did that in Goffstown too. So it's a really easy website to remember when you're promoting it. So, um, you know, on these um, door hangers I told you about, the Recycle Right website's right there, our Facebook page is here, but it's a simple um, website. So the other thing we did is uh, these kind of things, um, I have printed on large um, two by three corrugated plastic, and I buy simple A-frame sandwich board signs, and I get huge colored posters made um, of different things, whether it's promoting, you know, household hazardous waste day, um, the things that I was telling you, you know, people do wrong, like, hey, please rinse your containers. Uh, this was promoting the new recycling website. So I get these made on uh, corrugated plastic, two foot by three foot, and we attach them to the A-frame signs and we move them around the community. So it's a nice, easy way to just get some messaging out there for whatever it is you wanna do. But so this Recycle Right website is where I can put other things. So for instance, like this was a, a list we made for uh, Christmas, because a lot of times you get a lot of contamination at Christmas time. So this kind of talked about the naughty and nice list on the things that we want to don't want to see and we do want to see. So I think just kind of making things a little colorful and fun sometimes grabs people's attention versus just doing, you know, text if you can. Um, let me close all those. And then the Facebook page, um, you know, here, we kind of, I just did another one uh, that was this morning, I think, or last night. We're having some issues with cardboard. People are putting huge pieces of cardboard uh, and they're not cutting it up and it's getting stuck in the baler and it's causing the baler to shut off because it's getting caught in front of the optical eye. So, 
you know, I just explained why we need it cut, you know what I mean? So that people understand, I'm not just saying, oh, I'm not trying to be a pain and say, hey, cut your stuff up because, you know, we want to see it nice and small. There's a reason behind it. So I try and explain that. And this is a post that I shared to those two other community pages as well. Um, so we do all kinds of things like that. There's a, you know, I'll share uh, hearings that are related to us. So we're looking at eliminating free dump days because we have the new facility and we accept stuff year round. So they have a hearing on that. Um, you know, we put our seasonals out here and stuff. So these can be really a simple, I've gotten a little fancier with my Facebook stuff recently because I learned about a program called Canva, which uh, they have a free version of it, but I paid for the version and I'm sharing it with the uh, town hall too, who's just starting a page, but it allows you to do um, really easy things. I love this. It saves me so much time. You just find a template and you modify it. So, you know, this was a flyer I made um, we're looking at doing a, what do you call it, a needs analysis for our DPW building to determine if we want to um, rehab the DPW building and modify it or build a new facility. So I made a little flyer, had these printed out, and they're at Town Hall and here, and I posted online. But this program is so nice and easy. You take something like this over on the left, and you can drag and drop and modify it for yourself. So this has been a time saver for me. So I, I definitely like the Canva application. That's been really great. Uh, in Goffstown, I scrolled way back when I was doing things here just to show you some old stuff. But here's another flyer that was made. And we actually made a website for knotweed because we had a real problem with knotweed. So again, same thing. You can, um, you can have your IT staff create a shortcut link that it's, you know, goffstown.com slash knotweed. And it'll bring you to this. Uh, and it's got pictures of what knotweed is. It's got a flyer that you can print out on why it's bad, you know. Um, so these are just things, you know, I, I try and think of things that the public, uh, I want the public to know about because I need their help. Um, and speaking of that, a lot of times when I do Facebook posts, I, I title them how you can help um, to kind of catch people's attention. And I give them little, you know, tidbits of things they can do that would be helpful um, to our department, I think the one I just posted. Yeah, see how you can help. So I do try and do those every so often with the same phrase to kind of let people know I'm looking for some assistance uh, from the residents. Um, so I think if there was anything else. So yeah, the A-frame boards is another really simple thing like those door hangers that anybody can do. And it's an, a non-technical way of doing things. If you don't want to get into social media, you can at least get some simple messaging out. You know, on the boards, you got to make sure you keep them really simple. Uh, because, you know, when you're driving by these or they're at a stop sign, you know, to look at, they can't have a lot of words on them, you know, uh, so they got to be pretty simple, but I've made a ton of these. And when we did them in Goffstown too, for single stream uh, contamination issues, we got a lot of positive feedback. People really liked them. So they were a nice, easy, easy way to get some info out in the public. Well, thank you, Megan, for sharing that. Um, yeah, yeah. All great, great stuff. And I'd have to say, you know, I think back um, that whole empowerment uh, that we talk about in some of your uh, techniques as far as, you know, getting the public um, to help you, you know, I mean, I think back, um, I used to use a uh, phrase uh, when I was in law enforcement, you know, uh, see it, hear it, report it. Um, and I used to, and I still use that to this day, um, kind of gave it to the, the P local PD here as well. They put it in all their newsletters you know, to try to stimulate people to um, assist in that way. It's worked well, I know, in a lot of different uh, outlets. I know, I think back, uh, court had some stuff, you know, with uh, water and sewer and, and that kind of stuff as far as um, it was talked about, as far as the uh, proper disposal of, of different things, whether it be the, you know, the wipes and, and those types of things that really screw up um, sewer systems and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, that's great, great, great stuff. Um, I do want to, before we run too tight on time here, I do want to kind of open it up uh, to folks that are here on the, in the program today. If, if they have questions, um, love, to, love to have you pop off of um, your mute there and uh, or raise a hand or you know, pop a, a message in the chat box there uh, for any questions that you may have. I know that it might seem like we've been uh, really banging a social media drum maybe this morning here, but 
I do have to say that it is one of the probably one of the leading edges of advocacy uh, for for public works. I mean, we've seen it happen in many different other arenas, but I think personally, when I think think of the different uh, pages that you know I'm I'm connected with or familiar with, um, I'd have to say that the social media one certainly is, and Facebook certainly taking that lead. I mean, some of the other cities and in larger groups uh, that have multiple platforms maybe would would say that there was another one that was a leader, but I think in the overall catchment area, it's probably the uh, uh, Facebook page that really gets the best bang for the drum. So is there, um, is there anybody that um, has, a, has a question of any of the uh, panelists here? And we'll, we'll uh, kick that to them, open it up. Scott, also, if anyone has any input or ideas that maybe we haven't touched on, anything you're doing in your community to share, that would be great as well. Before I steal the floor, oh, it looks like Jason might have some, some thoughts. I had a question about um, businesses. Has anyone been successful um, you know, advocating to businesses because their major um, concern is the disruption of any project with, in front of their business? And they're a little bit less emotional than uh, you know, families and children and our, our normal citizens that would get, um, you know, see the, the good that's coming out of all the, the work that uh, we do and the advocacy programs that uh, some of you have presented today. So I just wondered if anyone had success with businesses. <laughs> I, put, I mean, I guess all I can say is, of course, we have our downtown, which is the heart of the city. Um, from a business standpoint, they're never going to be happy because you're disrupting their, potentially their customers. I think the best thing we do is we try to keep, we work with them to keep them informed and to make sure that we, one, we understand sort of what we can do for them. And I think that's the important aspect. If they believe and you work through it with them that you're, you're going to try to, if they have deliveries, it's five o'clock in the morning or one o'clock in the afternoon that you're doing to work with them to make sure that those things happen. Again, they're never going to be happy, but at least they're going to feel that you're paying attention to them. I mean, that's about all uh, yeah, we deal with our downtown, again, our downtown merchants and they're not always happy, but like I said, I think they're, they're less happy if they know what's going on and they can plan. I've had merchants say, hey, you, if you could tell me you're gonna rip up the sidewalk, I'll have a sidewalk sale two days before. Sure, I'll help you have a sidewalk sale uh, two days before I come in to do that. So, I mean, that's about the only advice I can give is, is communications, is to let them know what's gonna happen, when it's gonna happen, and then do your best to try to provide um, assistance so that they can, can they can feel that they can continue to operate. Um, I just wanted to mention something in Glasstown. We rebuilt uh, downtown Main Street. Uh, it was 114 right through town. And that was a huge disruption to all the businesses. We only, you know, um, that is a direct way for everyone feeding from surrounding towns to come right through. So to do a detour around downtown was not an option at all. Uh, so that was a very challenging project. And we literally went door to door, spoke with resident uh, business owners. We were on a first name basis with everybody. Uh, we created a, um, I call it an e-blast, a weekly e-blast. So we let all the businesses sign up for emails and we gave them a little more detailed information than we put out to the public just because really it boils down to, I, you can only throw so much on Facebook. You don't want to have long, long posts, but I would write as much as I could and give that to the resident, uh, the businesses to let them know what was going on. Uh, we had some meetings with them as well. So it was, it was definitely challenging, but keeping them in the loop as much as possible uh, was definitely helpful. And, you know, we just, we did everything we could to work around them and, and limit any detours uh, or create like a one-way loop sometimes when we had to, but even that was very upsetting to them uh, when we had to do that. So, you know, we just, we tried to do the project as quick as we can, but in their eyes, you know, they felt as though it dragged on forever and ever. So it, that's tough. It's tough when you have a big project um, that Im impacts your, your small downtown, for sure. 
Yeah, Megan, on the, the email blast, I think that's a great technique that we've used for both businesses and um, residents. And, and I think like you mentioned, we target it to the people most affected by the project. Um, and we do, we send out more detailed information uh, directly pertaining to them. Um, access will be cut off from this part of the street to this part of the street, like really detailed stuff uh, because the project is, is so emotional for them because it's affecting them more than anybody else. And, and it really gives them an opportunity to ask questions directly rather than speculating and, and creating uh, false narratives. Uh, they get the answer directly from us and, and really can, can help the project success. We also had separate signage that would say uh, this business open. So let's say if you're working around one business in particular, you can have a special sign that says, you know, please use this entrance or, you know, we are open for business. So we we had reader boards and we flashed on the reader boards, all businesses open. Uh, so again, just any little effort to let the businesses know you're trying to help them. Yeah, the, and the only other little piece that I would advocate for too as well is um, early early on communications. Um, so in other words, as the project is being planned um, and putting that together, whether it be through, um, you know, you may have preliminary design uh, that has been done and also then working into, you know, final design and engaging those uh, business owners and or you know community people that are affected you know I think about you know constructions of sidewalk and, and things of that nature so um, in in that situation if you can get that dialogue ahead of time it helps take a little bit of that anxiety out I think when it all of a sudden you end up having to say hey guess what we're, we're going to be closing off this section of, of the road and or sidewalk in you know starting tomorrow um, and they're going, what are you talking about? You know, um, so I think that that lead in having it early uh, is certainly better and, and also having them be part of the, the conversation. So I don't know if that answered your, your question there, Stacey. Yes, th thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we're, we're starting a project on Main Street here in Plymouth and um, it's just especially difficult now with businesses coming off of COVID and um, you know, having disruptions uh, thereafter, I think it's going to be um, possibly delayed or pushed back, but um, to accommodate. But yeah, it's just definitely challenging, especially in this environment now. Yeah, I can yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, we've got one starting off right up right immediately off our downtown, a major stormwater line, and so far. We're not saying we're going to push it off, but I've been emphasizing to my engineering group, communication is going to be critical. Just again, just back to you, no business, just like us. You don't want to walk in Monday morning and, and see something in front of your in front of your door. So, and I know we like saying, well, hey, we can't control everything, and gee, there are going to be surprises, but we really need to minimize the surprises and communicate. Um, if something is going to happen. Over communication is not a bad thing. And so that, that's the only advice. Again, I like Megan, and when I built a roundabout, I detoured 24,000 cars around my downtown for one season. And I spent my entire summer basically with the merchants up and down our Main Street that summer. Every morning, I ate lunch every single day on Main Street that, that summer. <laughs> Don't worry, boss. It's going to go great. There's going to be Thank no you. problem. This is my city all. engineer. He's trying to reassure me. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's great. Is there anyone else that has any uh, questions, comments, uh, things to share? We're kind of getting close to our uh, our end time here and don't want to, you know, if in fact you have something, certainly don't want to leave you out, uh, but also want to be respectful of everyone's time because I know everybody's busy. The spring has sprung and everybody is off to the races. If they're not raking dirt roads and gravel roads, drying them out, they are um, filling potholes and thinking about when they're going to lift their road bands and start sweeping streets. So, it's, it's Scott, just, just I guess a comment for the group. Just the advocacy goes a long ways 
not just necessarily in our projects and other things. Uh, Scott's very active, others in our uh, public works community on the first responder issue. Uh, in the state legislature right now, there's a bill to add public works uh, to the section of the statute dealing with compensation if someone is killed on the job um, to give us equal standing with police and fire. So advocacy, it goes across the board and affects all of those kind of issues too. So as you're thinking and you're, uh, and you're looking at this and you're starting local, um, that's important because you never know who's going to be the next legislature, the next state, uh, the next state senator. So when a bill comes up in front of them, like the one right now for us about for compensation for someone killed on the job or for dealing with de um, uh, our designation as first responders, this is as important for those issues too. So what you do every day helps us with those other issues. Yeah, definitely. That 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 is a great, probably a great um, summary to things here today, Court. Actually, maybe we should have let off with it, but I think it um, certainly echoes that, you know, we are first responders, uh, public works officials, uh, workers, uh, certainly first responders. We do have some, some recognition um, in some lights, whether through FEMA or in other um, forums, but we need to solidify that so that we are, um, certainly recognized um, a bit more and are put into some of those same types of benefits um, that the other folks um, in the profession are in, such as police and fire as well. So. Scott, I'm just taking a quick look. I don't see anybody unmuted, but um, you know, if you had any other additions, comments, ideas that you wanted to pop in, please you know, do unmute. I'll keep watching to see if anyone's waiting to interject or to put some words out there. Um, but meanwhile, oh, Eric, you might have some comments for us. Yeah, hi, Marilee. Uh, first of all, thank you for hosting this. And I just wanted to thank, you know, uh, Court, Megan and Kyle for uh, a great presentation and some information that I think we're certainly gonna be able to use here in Amherst. So uh, thank you very much, very useful information. Excellent, thanks, Eric. We appreciate you joining us this morning. And I'm going to take a quick look if anyone has anything else to add. I'm not seeing it. So, Scott, if you don't mind, I'm going to go through a couple quick things. Go right ahead. Thank, thank you to everybody. I, I really appreciate it. I hope that um, everybody's, you know, as Eric said, I certainly even myself have come away with some great things. And I'll be reaching out to those folks there to get a couple of things as well. But um, it's always great to share. Thank you. And thank you all, you know, Megan, Quark, Kyle, Scott, thank you for being here to, to share this information. I agree, lots of great info. I'm glad we recorded this. We'll make this available. I was hearing through the meeting, you know, some folks had different commitments. There's a lot going on out there right now and couldn't make it. So I think this will be good that this is available. Wanted to just point out a couple things um, that we're trying to do to make a uh, create some opportunity for you to build awareness of how Public Works makes it happen. We are going to be building out a bit of a kind of a press release kit or a press kit for the New Hampshire Road Scholar Program. So you can, if you have a Road Scholar achievement in your community, you can you know, take an editable PowerPoint slide. We're gonna provide some different tools, maybe put their name, their picture in it, and hopefully share that within your community, whether it's your cable access television, your local newsletter, whatever. So we're gonna to try to make that more visible for you. Um, we did just put out a newsletter with, um, I just started creating this and I, I added this link kind of last minute. But uh, things coming up. So if you're not seeing the did you details in Did You Know newsletter, stuff that's coming up includes some conversations on social media. Um, NHMA is going to be helping us present on policies, procedures, you know, good professional social media presence. We're doing a jump start next month. In May, we have a conversation scheduled on how to tell the public work story. Um, so we've got some folks that'll join us to talk about using annual reports, using video, using some engagement, um, ways that you can help to tell what Public Works is doing. So watch for those as well. One note, you know, not to specifically recommend Canva, but um, I did use Canva to create this newsletter. Um, there are a lot of great tools like Canva out there, um, but I was able to embed it in our, in our website. So if you're thinking about any of those tools, um, you know, I'm happy to share some of what I've become familiar with that you can use across platforms for outreach efforts. Um, Want to just remind you that if you need technical assistance, we're happy to help here at T2. Please do reach out. One thing before I forget, Anne had mentioned, Anne is with the DOT, that they have, I think it was a stormwater table 
um, that they uh, are using in their environmental bureau and that if anyone has any community events that something like that might be helpful to have represented, you know, reach out and we can put you in touch and see if that group can help to, to join you for your public event. So um, keep that in mind. If you're not following us on Facebook, please do. Um, we're happy to share some information that hopefully you can share out as well. Um, let us know how we can help. We know that Public Works makes it happen. Uh, keep in touch on how we can assist with that. And last but not least, the evaluation. So if you are looking for your New Hampshire Road Scholars hours um, for, for attending today, please, you know, take a take a snapshot or scan the QR code. Um, I'll put this into the chat pod in just a moment as well, the link, um, but complete that evaluation. So that is what I have, Scott. I don't know if there are any closing part, parting words here that anyone had. I'm going to check the chat pod. Anything else, Scott, before we wrap up? I don't think so. Um, thank you to everybody and thank you to our panelists and um, happy spring. Awesome conversation. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Everybody stay safe, stay well. Have a good day. Take care. I'll hang out in the room for just a moment if anyone wants to get that QR code scanned, please do.